There are a lot of women that choose to do the ketogenic diet while they're pregnant. Now, I'm not here to say that's good or bad because quite honestly, the scientific evidence just isn't there one way or another. Nothing to say that it's bad and nothing to say that it's good. There's a lot of evidence that shows that it helps people get pregnant, but the studies aren't really there. So we have to just take a look at what works best for you. I know plenty of women, lots of women, that have followed a ketogenic protocol while they're pregnant and everything works out just fine. Some people wanna use a ketogenic diet while they're pregnant and then go off of it, and some vice versa. So rather than tell you what's good or bad, I figure I'm gonna lay out the four top foods, in my opinion, for pregnant women that are following a ketogenic diet. This way, if you are doing keto and you do choose to go this route, we can make sure that you're getting what you need. You get the folic acid, you get the right fats, you get the choline. Anyhow, I'll break it all down, we'll have some fun with it, and I'll weave science in between these things so you can also learn a little bit more about how keto can help you get pregnant too. Hey, please make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. That way you know whenever I'm posting a new video or going live. And after you watch this video, check out that link down below in the description to Thrive Market. If you haven't heard of Thrive before, they're an online grocery store, but I've been able to create some cool things with them. I've created uh, grocery boxes for keto, for fasting, for thyroid support, things like that. So that way you can just get your groceries delivered to your doorstep based on what I think is good. So based on what I've seen and what I've shopped around for at the grocery store. So anyhow, check that link out after you watch this video. Let's go ahead and let's dive right into this. The first one I want you to pay attention to, and quite honestly, it's probably the most important, is going to be consuming, if possible, small fatty fish. Okay, fish is important when you're pregnant, and the reason that I'm saying this is because most doctors are going to tell you just to steer clear of fish because they don't want you to get the mercury, they don't want you to get the radiation, and this and that, and I completely understand and respect that, but they're not nutrition experts and they're just kind of making it really simple and broad. You need to go with the really small fish, the bigger fish, the larger predatory fish, like the tuna and the swordfish, stuff like that. Yes, those are very high in the heavy metals, but the smaller that you go down the food chain, the anchovies, the sardines, the mackerel, very low levels of heavy metals there. And the positive effect of the DHA and the EPA, the actual omega-3s that you're getting from that, far outweigh any small contamination that could occur from a small fish. The smaller the fish and the shorter the lifespan, the higher the quality overall because less time and size to absorb radiation and toxins, okay? But DHA, as your doctor has probably told you, is one of the most important things that your fetus needs. It's just what your baby needs. It's what is going to grow the brain. So much of our brain is already made up of DHA to begin with. Okay, the other thing is outside of just that, it's a great way to help prevent what is called preeclampsia. Okay, preeclampsia is the most common disorder in pregnant women, affecting over 7% of them. So what this is, it's something that affects mom mainly. So it's gonna raise the blood pressure, but then what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause all kinds of potential birth defects and uh, preterm labor and all kinds of things like that. In fact, there was a study that was published in the International Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology that found that women that ate a high fatty fish diet had a 60% less chance of getting preeclampsia compared to those that were eating a normal diet. Okay, so when we look at the evidence there, all the stuff to keep mom healthy points towards having high fat. Now this goes for whether you're keto or not, but if you're keto, try to get your calories more so from those things. And if you don't like fish or canned fish or anything like that, go for a fish oil pill that's high quality or go for an algal oil pill if you're vegan or vegetarian. All right, now the next one I wanna talk about is going to be the folic acid piece. Broccoli, avocado and spinach. I'm roping them into one here. Okay, very, very, very important. I wanna make sure you're getting your folic acid and when you're on keto, it's not that hard to become a little bit low in folic acid. If you don't have enough folic acid, then you're not gonna be able to develop the neural tubes within the baby. So the baby's not gonna be able to develop the neural tubes and you are at very high risk of preterm labor. Okay, that's why the doctors always push, taking folic acid tablets, take this, take that. But if you eat the right foods on keto, you'll get it. So lots of broccoli, it's also gonna help control the estrogen. So that way you're super balanced out, you're not all over the place with your hormones, which already is a really tough time. But additionally, good amounts of vitamin C in all these two, especially in the avocado and broccoli. So that's gonna make it so that iron gets absorbed by the fetus a little bit more too. So the baby can get the iron absorbed so it can actually develop the red blood cells that it needs and become a healthy baby when it's time to be born. Okay, let's take a quick segue over to some science really quick. This particular study was published in the AACE Clinical Case Reports. This took a look at four women that had PCOS, okay, and they were overweight and infertile, which usually goes hand in hand if you have PCOS. Now, here's what's interesting. They put them on a ketogenic diet for six months. During this six month period, 
two of them spontaneously got pregnant, and all four of them had immense improvements in their overall symptoms. So what we're looking at here is the ketogenic diet could very well be what someone needs to help get pregnant if they are infertile, because a lot of times infertility issues are a direct result of PCOS, whether the patient understands that they have that or even knows they have it or not. So I wanted to take a quick segue on this just to give you a little bit of fun and some just insight into, I don't know, how it's easier to get pregnant when you're on keto. The next one we have to talk about is eggs and mainly the yolk. Load up on those egg yolks. Okay, sure, we get the biotin, we get all the stuff for the hair, skin, and nails. That's phenomenal. But the big piece that I wanna talk about is going to be the choline. Choline is so critical simply because it's a precursor to the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which is not only good for your brain energy and your brain development, but very good for babies. Okay, now, the reason that eggs are here are not just because of the choline. Okay, they are probably one of the most abundant amino acid profiles that's out there. So you're getting a good degree of protein in a pretty small volume. Plus, they're calorically dense and they're satiating. And they're probably gonna get you most of the micronutrients that you need. Big issues with the ketogenic diet, or big concerns, I should say, is that you're gonna become uh, deficient in specific micronutrients. And if you're pregnant, that could definitely be a concern because you're already zapping your own micronutrients in the case of the baby, right? So in this case, we get our nice micronutrients because the eggs have a nice plethora of them. Just go for ones that are not fed a soy-rich diet and go for ones that are cage-free and high omega whenever possible. But one word to the wise, don't lean on eggs as your omega source, okay? The omega-3s that are gonna come from eggs, although are still decent, they are in what is called an alpha-linoleic acid form, which has to go through a fermentation conversion process in our body which makes it so only about one to 5% at the most is really gonna get converted into usable form of EPA or DHA. So just word to the wise, eggs, egg yolks all the way, but get a little bit creative with it and don't just lean on them. Let's have a little fun and talk about another study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism, but this one in 2005. And the reason I bring this one up, very similar results to the last one, but it's because it was a 2005 study. People think that the ketogenic diet, ketogenic lifestyle is just a few years old. No, keto's been around since the 1920s and they've been doing studies surrounding pregnancy and PCOS for a long time. So this study from 2005, 15 years ago, takes a look and finds that five women that had PCOS that were also infertile went on a ketogenic diet. Within six months, two of them spontaneously got pregnant and all five of them had hormonal balances. They came back to normal in terms of their hormones. They felt stable again. So again, I mention this simply because if you are trying to get pregnant, ketogenic dieting might be the way that kind of gets you there. Again, up to you if you wanna keep going on it while you're pregnant and through your whole term. Okay, the last thing that I wanna talk about is kind of a plethora of different ingredients. It is making a keto bread, but I put together some specific ingredients that you can just put all together and make your easy bread. I'm not gonna show you a recipe video, I'm just gonna outline it so you know. Okay, you can use a cup of almond flour, Okay, the almond flour is just gonna be your base. Then you're gonna use 150 grams of Romano cheese. You need to use a hard cheese like Romano or Parmesan because in this case, you're gonna have a higher A2 casein content, which means it's better for you, less inflammatory, less risk to the baby, and it's more satiating. Plus, I think it tastes better with the bread. Okay, then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do four whole eggs in this case. So we're getting the choline again, high omega rich eggs, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use between 175 grams and 200 grams of ghee. Not butter, but ghee. Again, this is clarified butter, so you're not getting the milk solids, you're just getting the straight milk butter fat. Okay, so this is going to be very, very good at supporting what's called short chain fatty acids within your gut. When you're pregnant, you might notice that your gut biome is a little bit off. You might notice that you don't end up uh, digesting as well. Well, if you feed the bacteria within your gut and you feed the cells in your gut with good short chain fatty acids like you'll get from good quality ghee, then that's solving that issue. Then simple enough, two teaspoons of baking powder, no real catch there, just knead it. Okay, then probably use one to two tablespoons of onion powder, again, for this, taste, but also the folic acid. Onion powder is a really good source of folic acid because it's essentially concentrated, granulated onion, right? So it works really well. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix this all up, put it in some kind of baking tin, pop it in the oven between 375 and 425, honestly. It's pretty easy, so it ends up cooking either way, but I would usually say between 375 and 425. Okay, and then when it comes out, put some sunflower seeds, put some pumpkin seeds on the top, maybe put some hemp seeds. That way you're getting more in the way of potassium, you're getting more in the way of the folic acid. So you're really creating something that's a carb craving busting, absolute great micronutrient rich food for pregnant mom. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you want more videos surrounding the world of keto and pregnancy, then by all means, put them down below in the comment section. As always, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.